All right, today I am going to start my project of upgrading this Dell Inspiron. This is a 3670, kind of a proprietary case. See a number of YouTubers upgrade these to do some gaming. But I haven't exactly seen exactly what I want to do. They've upgraded power supplies, video cards. Um, some of the other guys didn't want to modify the case because it was expensive. Other guys pretty much chopped it all in half. What I'm going to attempt to do is upgrade this to do some decent gaming and uh, make some modifications. To the, I'm not afraid to modify it. I got the thing for next to nothing. Had to repair a couple of things, but now I'm doing some upgrades. But I'm going to have to modify the chassis a little bit. Upgraded power supply is going to require ventilation in the bottom of it, so I'm going to have to cut a hole in the bottom. Um, I'm using this EVGA 500 watt. And you can see it's got a fan on the bottom, but it fits in there like that, so it's going to have to have a hole in the bottom because this one does not have any kind of ventilation down there. But the first thing I'm going to do with this project, I've got one of the... Uh, 24 pin to 8 pin adapters. I've seen other people say they've used this. The actual advertisement for the thing on Amazon specifically said it was not for the 3670, so I'm not exactly sure. I've checked the pin out of this 8 pin connector. So I've identified what wires do what. Oh, there's a bunch of these on YouTube, people checking these pin outs, but I'm going to plug my adapter into this power supply and before I dive in and do all these modifications I'm just going to see if it will actually turn on with this adapter installed. All right. Plug those two connectors. We got here, but this is off of Amazon. There's several available on there. I imagine they're all pretty much the same thing. But, uh, some sort of low circuitry in here. I don't know exactly what that is. I don't want to cut it open to find out. But the uh, color cones match up. Uh, when I did my pinouts, these two white ones were 12 volts. After you turn it on, you get the three ground wires, those match up. The uh, purple one here was a uh, standby voltage, I guess. It was a, like 11.3 volts all the time with power off. Um, the green one here was a 5 volts with the unit off. And then when you turn it on, the gray one has 12 volts. So. I don't know, the color codes match up. We'll see if the thing works. Just plug it in. Hopefully we don't fry anything. Maybe I'll uh, check a couple voltages before I plug it in. All right, let's plug in power to this. Get the voltmeter out. All right. Let's see if we have any. Standby voltage here. So purple. Yeah, purples give us our standby voltage. Let's see if the green one has our 5 volts on it. Hmm, it's only got 2.4. That might be an issue. So with stock power supply, 
right there I've got 5 volts but I was measuring that with the power supply plugged in we plug in that connector <clears throat> see if it reads anything different when it plugged into the motherboard Yeah, motherboard did kind of fire up when we did that. CPU, let's plug in the CPU connector. All right, that's a good sign. Usually when you power, apply power to this computer, it fires up for a few seconds and then it shuts off. Down, so I press the power button. Nothing. Hmm. Well, that's not good. Let's try rebooting it and see what happens. set like it normally does. Let's check the power again on that uh, green wire. See if I've got my standby voltage. Oh, Ooh, maybe it will work. Now I've got five volts on there. And let's check the purple wire. Yeah, I got my 12 volts there. Huh. All right, let's fire this thing up, see if it works. Push the power button. Oh, it did fire up, that's good. Get this over. Take a look at the computer screen. Yeah, we're booting up. Well, that's good news. Okay, so. We can turn it off. So, interesting. So this adapter, even though the ad on Amazon says this is not for this particular model of computer, it sure seems to work. So I guess I'm going to proceed with this uh, modification. I'll get back on with you when I get uh, everything set up to start swapping in parts. I've got a power supply going in. I've got a video card right here. I've got the infamous GT710 that's coming out. I just had this around, so I was using that to play around with this, this machine. But uh, that is coming out. I'll tell you what I've got a little later when I go through all the parts. Um, I already did add another stick of uh, 8 gigs of RAM. It's a DDR4, I believe. Yeah, DDR4 uh, 2600, I think. I'll have to look at that one up, confirm it. But I'll go over all the parts in a, in a bit when I get everything set up. Uh, I did also already add a uh, NVMe. I got a 970 Evo 500 gigabyte NVMe drive. Uh, the thing came with a one terabyte mechanical drive. I've still got that hooked up just for storage, but uh, I moved everything over to the uh, M.2. It's way, way faster now. All right, well, let me get everything set up and uh, and we'll get back on. All right, let's go through the parts I got here. Um, so let me briefly go over why I'm, what I, my goal is here. So this isn't really, I don't know if I'd call it a budget PC build, but... I like to utilize the parts I have, you know, and I get a lot of old office PCs and, um, you know, I don't like things to go to waste and I have a good time, you know, trying to make it work and repurpose things. So, so anyway, this particular PC, uh, it's uh, relatively new. It's got an i3-8100, which, you know, it's a smaller unit. It's only four core, four thread, but uh, it actually performs pretty well. I recently built a couple of machines for my, two of my kids. Uh, one of them's got an i5-2400, the other one's got an i7-920. Uh, I put 
RX uh, 580 video cards in both of those. <coughs> they both perform pretty well. <coughs> Excuse me. They both perform pretty well, you know, the games they play. Um, um, what do they play? Uh, Apex Legends, um, Overwatch, some of those kind of games, they, they perform pretty well. This piece, this uh, CPU actually benchmarks a little higher than that on uh, userbenchmark.com. I was doing crunching the numbers there, did a couple of benchmarks on it, and actually performs pretty well. So I'm expecting to get uh, equal to or better performance than what uh, what they're getting. So that's good. Um, the uh, <clears throat> computer came with uh, eight gigs of RAM. The uh, DDR4 2666. I've added another uh, eight gig stick of that. It was like 25 bucks on Amazon. <clears throat> uh, and I already told you about the. Uh, um, M.2 M drive I put in there. So that sped everything up. So um, I mainly just need the video card, but to do that, I of course need more power. This video, uh, power supply that comes with this unit doesn't, it's only got these two connectors on it. Very low power. Um, <clears throat> I actually was considering the RX 580 because I was happy with the uh, ones I did for the other two machines. And I did pull out one of theirs and I test fit it in here and by removing these little uh, wire uh, container over here I was actually able to squeeze the thing in there and literally within about a sixteenth of an inch from the other side of the cabinet and still get the uh, power connector in there so it will fit uh, this is a uh, let me go grab the box see which one that was hey. alright so if you're doing the build in this enclosure for this computer this radio card will fit uh, XFS Radeon RX 580 uh, in this chassis uh, like I said basically within a sixteenth of an inch I was able to fit it in there um, so it'll work a um, couple of things the reasons why I went with what I did I decided to go with the uh, uh, GeForce GS, GTX 1650 Super the 1650 would also fit in here easily, and it doesn't have the uh, additional power connector. I wanted a little better performance, so I went with the Super, and it's actually smaller than the RX 580 that I already confirmed will fit. So, but uh, the power consumption was kind of a big deal. The uh, 1650 Super has far less power consumption, and I have noticed a pretty big power draw in the... Uh, with the RX 580s, and I, my our off the room we use for an office in this house, um, actually, when I had two two gaming PCs and a gaming laptop in there with another server that I had running, once I upgraded their video cards, they actually started tripping the breaker when everything was running. They were all playing games at the same time. Um, you'd turn on a light switch or something, and, and then the whole room would shut off. So, I actually, had to move some power around to different uh, different uh, circuit breakers, different branches to power everything. So the uh, RX 580 definitely has a significant power draw. Um, the, the 1650 Super is far less. So what that did for me here is it got me pretty much equivalent power, and I might not have as um, the uh, future with the because this is on the uh, 1650 has only got four gigs of video RAM, but the 580's got eight gigs. So that might be a drawback, but performance-wise on the current things that checked a lot of benchmarks a lot of people have got reviews on those and the they did well um, but so to do this build I would have had to go with a uh, larger power supply to do the uh, the 580 I went with a 500 watt power supply I would have had to go a little bit higher I think just to make sure I had enough power to run everything um, so anyway, saved a few bucks. I, like I said, I wasn't shooting for budget, but I, I guess I would call it best bang for my buck. So got a slightly smaller power supply, uh, more efficient video card, and uh, plus the uh, 1650 Super is quite a bit smaller, so it won't take as much space. Anyway, so that's the logic behind the video card selection and the uh, power supply selection. Saved a few bucks. Uh, another reason I didn't want to go with the 580s because after I bought them 
um, for the, the other computers, the uh, uh, price went up considerably, so the, the 1650 Super was cheaper. With this small cabinet, another issue I got is cooling. I don't, there's not very good airflow. There's only the CPU fan stock and the power supply, which with the new power supply, it doesn't even get vented into the cabinet, it just goes out the bottom. So I picked up a few of these 80 millimeter fans. They're just uh, inexpensive ones. We'll see how they perform. Same size as the CPU fan, but uh, looks like I got room for about three of them without any significant modification. I'm gonna put uh, two of them up here on the back of the chassis. There's pre-made spots for that, so I'll be able to get two of those, that'll be good. And the third one, <coughs> I'm gonna mount probably just to the uh, side of the enclosure. I was thinking, or hoping, I could maybe get two of them in there, but that little, that little vent's not quite big enough. So I think I'm gonna stick with just one right there. So it'll sit roughly there on the side of the cabinet. I'll have to plug it in as I'm sliding the cabinet on. So I'll get air in intake from here on the side of the cabinet. Um, and then one, of course, for the CPU cooler. And then I'll use these two in the back as exhaust. And then, uh, of course, the uh, video card has a couple of fans that'll be helping dry or through and blow it out the back. So anyway, uh, I also got this little fan splitter. Uh, gets powered off of one of the... Uh, Molex plugs, and then it plugs into the uh, CPU <coughs> fan plug just to get a signal, and then uh, the CPU fan will plug into here, and then it's controlled by by the motherboard like it normally does, but it gets its power from the Molex, and then I've got ports for, uh, what is this, nine more fans if I'm going to use them. I've only got a total of four total, including the CPU fan, so hopefully that'll do the job there. Um, what else? I already told you about the <coughs> EVGA 500 watt power supply. Probably have a whole lot of extra cables. Cable management is going to be pretty tricky in this tiny little cabinet. I might have to try to get a bunch of that kind of bundle up in here out of the way. I don't know. We'll see how I'm going to do that. The uh, SATA power does come out of the motherboard. I don't know if I'll, I may just leave that like that because that's the way it's set up now and it's already wired up um, for the little disk drive and for that mechanical hard drive. Um, but uh, we'll see on that. I can leave it there or I can power it off the power supply. So anyway, I'll get started uh, swapping the power supply out. I am gonna have to cut a hole in the bottom. I'll figure out that once we get there. Not sure yet if I'm gonna have to modify any of this other part of the chassis to get this to line up with the power connector, the cord, and all that. But we will find out shortly. So, as you can see, we are gonna have to cut a hole in the bottom of that to allow the fan to discharge. It is kind of spaced up just slightly, but. That would certainly be a, a deadhead for that fan. It wouldn't get nearly the circulation it needs. So, first let's take a look and see how this lines up in here. No idea. Let's see if the holes line up. Oh, they don't actually. Here, the power plug. So, right there, the holes are lined up. But the power connector is not quite. I'm going to have to trim out that enclosure a little bit to fit it around that. So, not a big deal. Just trim that a little bit and it should line right up.
right up to the black part of the chassis. I don't really want to go any further than that. And the screw holes are just... I could probably catch them, but I think what I'm going to do is get my step drill bit and run, open up those holes just a hair more. That way I can put the screws in and it'll mount right where it's at. It should work fine. Perfect. Alright, now I need to figure out where the hole in the bottom is going to be. I've got a 4 inch and I've got a 5 inch hole saw. So I cut that one. It's pretty much the whole bottom of that thing. Yeah. I think I'm going to go with the four. Alright, I did a user benchmark. So here's what I got before with a couple of different crappy video cards. There's a GT440. 2% on the video card. 
There's the GT710, 3.2%. And I overclocked the GT710, 4.6. Here's the GT6, or, uh, GTX 1650S, 56.6%. Much, much better. So 53, 90, 43. Everything went way up. This is a pretty solid machine. So uh, before this upgrade, all the best I could do is, you know, 20, 30 feet, uh, frames per second on this. Right now I'm getting 100, so there's 255 frames per second. Wow. That is awesome. And that was on low settings. Um, 211 frames per second. Wow, this is, this is pretty awesome. Wow, it's almost too fast. I can't, my eyes don't work. I gotta get used to this thing going so fast. My eyes can't work fast enough. Maybe I need a faster monitor. Wow, 300 frames per second almost. 294 frames per second. <laughs> this is awesome. Playing around with some Apex Legends. I don't really know how to play it. I'll just go to the firing range and run around just to see what this. Now I've got it locked on V Sync. It's showing it's steady. 60 frames per second, 57% GPU, 61%. Let me go in and turn off the uh, V-Sync so it'll let it basically unlock the video frame rates. Let's see. So video, there's what I've currently got. Full screen, 69. So if I turn off this uh, V-Sync, Should uh, unlock the frames per second. There you go. Yeah, even just in the uh, menu, but then the GPU goes to 100% almost. Let's go into the game. See what it does. Definitely puts a bigger load on it. And with my monitor is only a 60 hertz monitor, so I probably really can't take advantage of that extra GPU usage to get those extra frames per second. I don't know that I can tell the difference anyway personally but I'm not a big gamer but uh, anyway just to show you what it'll do if you had a better monitor it would certainly be better
Yeah. So it runs it pretty good. When you get the V-Sync unlocked, it's pretty much maxing out the CPU and the GPU, but they do seem to be pretty balanced, so that's good. This uh, i3 8100 and that uh, 1650 Super, at least on this game, seems pretty well balanced. Uh, right now the CPU's gone down. But anyway, just to give you an idea, I'm happy with this. It's pretty nice. So I'm not a huge fan of the uh, RGB bling, but I do like a little accent lighting. So I wanted to show you another thing I decided to add here. It's got this small little grill across the bottom that I thought would be kind of cool to put a little accent lighting behind it. So I've added a little string of LED, blue LEDs right to the bottom there, the 12 volt. And I actually used the uh, Molex connector from the fans that I cut off. So, gives me a little bit of the color, nice little accent lighting, and it uh, actually looks pretty classy. I'll fire it up here and show you what it looks like. So, it's daytime, so I'm not sure I'd close the blinds, see if we can see the, uh, the light that's fired up. So, just a real subtle, Added light, looks pretty cool at night. Just a little accent lighting at the bottom, real classy. Not overbearing or cheesy looking. So, anyway, there's my, that's all the bling I'm putting on this thing. Other than that, just looks like a pretty nice uh, standard business computer, but a uh, little muscle under the hood. So here's a cost breakdown of what uh, I got the machine for for free basically from an office that had it had stopped working had a hard drive issue um, so they just uh, scrapped it I got the hard drive swapped out of course I put the uh, m.2 drive in there but here's a breakdown of everything I purchased to do it you know and then just uh, some labor um, <clears throat> the uh, GTX 1650 super 189 bucks is what I got it for. They go up and down all the time. So you know, at the time I bought it, that's what it was. Uh, 500 watt uh, EVGA power supply, 45.99. Chassis fan hub, uh, 12 bucks. 24 pin to 8 pin power supply adapter, 12 bucks. I uh, used three of those uh, 80 millimeter fans. They were 350 each. I got one stick of 8 gig uh, RAM just to double up my RAM. So I got a total of 16 gigs. 26 bucks for that, and then the uh, uh, 500 gig NVMe drive, that was 69 bucks, you know, of course they go up and down, so anyway, at the time of this purchase, well, when I bought all these parts, I got 365 bucks into this machine, so anyway, I wasn't looking for a total cheap, you know, budget machine, but uh, like I said before, best bang for the bucks, what I was looking for, I just wanted a clean, decent machine, I already had the chassis, already had a machine that ran pretty good, just needed some upgrades, so I wanted to see what I could do with it. But uh, pretty happy with it. I think it turned out nice. It's a clean machine, um, you know, with a little extra bling on it. Very clean. Um, from the outside, can't really tell that it's been butchered up or hacked or anything. You got that little little notch on the power supply right down there. Can't really even tell that it was modified. And then, uh, of course, we got the... Uh, fan at the bottom could have gone you know lined that up a little bit better but I think that's gonna be just fine if it starts getting warm at all I might put some bigger feet on it just to get it up off the table a little bit but it seems to be off far enough I wouldn't put it on any kind of carpet or anything but uh, on a hard surface it seems to work just fine so anyway hope you enjoyed the build See what you can do with a little office machine. You get a halfway decent CPU. So $365, pretty satisfied with that. All right, thanks for watching.